CM Mezzo is Italian for six and a half. It's a 650. The CM Mezzo comes in two flavors, the STR or street, which is this, or the SCR, which is more scrambly. Both bikes feature the same 649cc parallel twin motor, which is essentially a Chinese copy of the Kawasaki one. And you'll see a very similar engine in the CF Moto lineup. This engine puts out 61 horsepower, peaking at 8,250 RPM and 54 Newton meters of torque at 7,000 revs. But more on that a little bit later. It sits suspended as a stress member in this steel frame, but you do get an aluminium swing arm. So let's tick off some other notable stats. The seat height is 810 millimetres. The bike weighs approximately 200 kilograms dry, and that's Moto Marini's words, not mine. And it has a 16 litre fuel tank, also approximately, apparently. As you look around it, you'll see that there's some nice components on the bike. Two piston floating calipers from Brembo with Bosch 9.1 ABS. Upside down Kayaba 43mm forks with 120mm of travel. And they are adjustable for preload, rebound and compression damping. The same goes for the Kayaba monoshock at the rear, except no compression this time other than preload. The tubeless Allo rims feature Pirelli Angel GT tyres. 160 60 17 at the rear and 120 70 18 at the front. It's available in three colours. This is Fire Red, which is joined by Starlight White and Smoky Anthracite. The build quality and finish is pretty decent, although you will notice the budget element in things like the end can. This isn't the end can itself, it's just a shroud that sits over the top of what is essentially a plain pipe underneath. However, I do like the styling of this bike. That flush fit tail light and the seat unit is really nice. All of the lighting is LED and the switch gear illuminate at night as well. The TFD display is good, nice and clear, but there are no modes to think about on this bike. It is very much a back to basics machine. It has, as I've mentioned, ABS, but there's no traction control or rider modes. but it does have Bluetooth connectivity for phone calls and music control, if that's your thing. So what does all this cost you? Well, the STR that you see here retails at £6,699. Now that's a pretty decent price, but you've got to remember that this has got competition from the likes of the Suzuki SV650, which is a much loved, well-proven, tried and tested bike. That retails at £6,499. You've got the Kawasaki, Z650, which is a bit more at 7499, and of course, now you've got the Honda CB750 Hornet, which comes in at 6999. So it's got a tough job. So, what's it like out on the road where it really matters? Okay, so out on the road, beautiful sunny day. If you've seen any of my videos, you'll recognize uh, this spot, which is where I start a lot of videos. So, let's have a look at that nice TFT display. Dun, dun, dun. Pretty good, nice matte finish to it, easy to see, got everything that you need on there. Switch gear on this side, hazard button, <coughs> kill switch, your lights, starter on this side, indicator, high beam, low beam, horn, and then your other controls and bits and pieces there. There's no fly-by wire throttle, cable throttle. It's all very back to basics, as I say, no traction control, there is ABS obviously, <coughs> but no traction control, no rider modes, anything like that. So let's see what this little 650 sounds like. That wasn't it, that was somebody else going past. Yeah, not too bad, so let's start with the engine. And it's a, a surprisingly peppy little motor. I mean, 61 horsepower is not too bad. It's a nice, lively engine. It does like to be revved. And to be honest, to, to get the most of out of it, you do have to give it some revs. 54 newton meters of torque isn't 
bad for an engine like this but all the uh, action does come in a little bit higher up the rev range so it is an engine that likes to be revved and it does reward you when you do rev it and actually despite the fact that that's kind of a, a fake end can on the end here you've just got a straight pipe coming out of the cap it doesn't sound too bad And the pickup is good. It's uh, yeah, it's a lot of fun in that sense. Sort of response is fine. Obviously, very direct with the, the cable operation. Nice like clutch. Um, and we'll talk about the gearbox in a minute. Thank you. Don't quite need that much room, but there you go. Thank you all the same. One of the caveats to this engine, then, if I'm going to throw, not not a negative at it, but uh, an observation. Let's put it this way: if you want to ride it a little bit more vigorously, obviously you have to be a little bit more aggressive with it. And I have found that um, the engine does get warm. It's a Euro 5 compliant engine, but it does seem to get pretty warm pretty quickly it's nice and sunny today it's not particularly warm but when I've been out riding it when the ambient temperature is kind of seven eight nine degrees something like that if you're having some fun around the country lanes and then stop at a junction the fan comes on pretty quickly it doesn't overheat or anything like that but it is evident that you are kind of work in the engine but as you can see it's a lively little thing lots of fun we'll touch on the handling in a minute but uh, even though the bike is probably heavier than you would expect it it doesn't feel it when you ride it in terms of the gearbox well it's not too bad actually it's a little bit sticky and a little bit clunky but the action is is okay. I've had no um, kind of miss shifts or miss gears or false neutrals or anything like that. Going down the box, you tend to notice it more than coming up. But there's a nice positive clunk to it. And uh, if you combine that with the adjustable lightweight pull on the lever, so a very comfortable bike to ride in that sense. And overall, if we look at ergonomics, it's a nice, comfortable bike as well. I say 810 millimeter seat height, so quite accessible. I'm five foot ten with a 32 inch inseam, and uh, obviously flat foot in the bike is no problem at all. But it's got a, a nice size to it. I don't feel cramped on it. I've got a nice bend in my legs, but not too much. The foot pegs are in a good position. The bars actually on this are kind of quite high I think they've been rotated round a little bit they feel like they're kind of not at their neutral point and uh, the seat is pretty comfortable as well I haven't spent hours and hours and hours on it but I don't think it would be too much of a problem if you did handling I suppose is the next thing to look at and again it is a nice very maneuverable bike you've got that uh, Kyaba suspension adjustable which at this price point I think is really good the fact that it's not just a preload on the front you've got rebound and compression damping uh, one in each leg so you can fine-tune that you've got the same on the rear although you don't have the compression damping you've only got rebound damping and preload of course out of the box I've not really messed around with it and I find this to be pretty good it's nice and comfortable uh, the bike tracks really well I think you, obviously the combination of having those lightweight alloy wheels you know pretty decent suspension considering the price of this bike and the Pirelli Angel GT tires it's very sure-footed so yeah as I say no traction control no uh, rider modes but to be honest, on a bike putting out this much power, traction control is not so much of an issue, I guess. On wet days, wet tarmac, and in low temperatures, you're just going to have to be a little bit more careful. 
but it's not the sort of bike that's going to be shredding the rear tyre to be honest it's quick steering um, yeah it's hard to kind of say anything bad about the way it handles for a bike at uh, this price range I know we've looked at a few I looked at the Honda Hornet recently and I kind of went through that list I didn't include this bike on that list when maybe perhaps I should have done but I think it's definitely uh, a competitor amongst those obviously longevity and uh, stuff like that and reliability we don't know too much about the engine again no idea of how bomb proof this is or what it's going to hold up like I imagine servicing is not going to be particularly expensive on this the dealer network is increasing all the time it's one thing you need to worry a little bit with with marks like this they are spread out quite a bit if you're in East Anglia you haven't really got a lot of choice and there's a big gap between kind of west of London and, and down to the southwest I don't know how many of those dealers have actually got bikes in stock and are fully active Moto Marini dealers but um, yeah that number's growing Around town it's fun, I can see this being a pretty handy little commuter bike if you need it to be. But it's just a nice, friendly, easy bike to ride. But can I sneak around that? Not really. This side I can, doesn't look like it's quite so easy on the other side. One other point to make about the gearbox that I've noticed is it, the gear it is it does appear to be quite short. You do kind of chase up the gearbox pretty quickly. Not a problem, it's uh, it's still relatively long-legged. That top gear is uh, 70 miles an hour uh, on the motorway. You'll be chugging along at 5,000 revs. So it's not the most relaxed, but by the same token, it's not hideous either. It is a nice bike to ride. I think it's a nice bike to look at. I think they've done a good job with the styling and I'll jump off of that so we can have a little bit of a look around it when I find somewhere. And I guess the one thing you would question or not question as such, but the one thing you're gonna to have to consider if you're spending what is essentially 6,700 pounds on this bike, there's a lot of competition out there. For less than that, you can buy an SV650 admittedly maybe a bit long in the tooth now but a fantastic bike um, the people that own them love them it's been around for donkey's years parts and servicing and all that stuff they network no problems with those at all for 300 pounds more than this you can get yourself on to the Honda CB750 Hornet which is an absolutely cracking bike the problem that Motor Marini have got is that they have put together, I think, a very good bike for the money. You know, nice tyres, nice suspension, good brakes. The problem you would have as a buyer, you've got to pick that over something like the Honda or the Suzuki. Um, and that's a difficult decision to make. If I was going to spend this kind of money, I would find the extra £300 and buy the Honda. Uh, no question. But if you want something a little bit different, if you like the look of this, if you want to roll up on something that uh, not many other people are going to, then this is a fine choice. Handles well, brakes well, goes pretty well. But Motor Marini have got really tough competition in this particular sector. So there you go, let's have a look. That seat, pretty comfortable. There's that neat little towel light at the back end. And the hugger with the indicators. Yeah, it's a lovely looking bike. Prettier than the Honda, I'll admit, I think. This is the bit that did make me laugh, is you look at this exhaust. And it looks like a nice little neat kind of underslung exhaust. When you look behind it, which you probably can't see that easily here, it is just a pipe that comes out the cat box here, and this is just a cover that goes over the top of it. Yeah, you'd be quite happy owning one of these. 
So, I don't think there's actually that much more I can say whilst I'm out on the bike. Let's just give it a start and let you listen to uh, that Chinese parallel twin. That wasn't a Chinese parallel twin, that was a two litre diesel golf. <laughs> Sounds alright, doesn't it? Pretty good. It's definitely a lovely day to be out, that's for sure. Okay, let's open it up a little bit on the dual carriageway. And here you get to see a little bit what I mean about it being relatively short geared. Now I said that that uh, screen was kind of a nice matte finish. That's good until you've got the sun directly behind you like that, and then I can't. I can actually, I can't read a thing on that unless I get my shade in front of it. One other thing I forgot about when I was talking about the engine are the vibes, um, and it's not too bad. There are some there. You feel it a little bit through the bars, a little bit through the foot pegs, but it's kind of a a, a vibration in a nice way. It gives the bike some character. I've got to admit, I've had lots of fun on this bike. It's sort of bike, I say, that it's nice, you feel like you're riding it, you can ride it, you can actually get the throttle on the stops. And there's a, there's a real pleasure to, to, to ride in kind of small capacity bikes where you can do that. So all in all, it's a nice looking bike that's fun to ride. It's got some nice pieces of kit on it and it's decently priced. There is, of course, a long and impressive history behind the Moto Marini name. And if you're looking for something that sets you apart from the crowd, then this could be it. So I hope this look at the Moto Marini Ciamezzo STR has been of interest. And if you've got any questions, just let me know in the comment section down below. All that leaves me to say is thanks for watching. And until next time, take care, ride safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye.